I just finished watching Noel Handgrenade's video on uh, the gender pay issue, the gap. Um, it's a good video. Um, he's pretty uh, animated, but, you know, he's animated from a, a sense of, I guess, frustrated common sense, and he's a very interesting person to listen to because of that. Um, his uh, points of view are rarely anything other than pretty middle of the road, um, but uh, he kind of has the, I don't know what you'd say, northern English <laughs> inability to suffer fools or to deal with what we in North America call bullshit. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting to watch, but he raises some very good points. Um, I would encourage anyone to watch the video. Um, and to me, um, the issue is one of why do we want equality in the first place? You sort of think that that's pretty axiomatic because all of our thinking since the Enlightenment has said, yes, uh, humans are equal, or even we've all, we've all embraced this idea since, I don't know, Christianity started or something. We're all equal before God type thing. Um, <clears throat> Why do we want equality? Is equality a means to something? Or is equality an end in itself? I would argue that equality is a means to something. A means for us to become more fully human. To me, equality means removing artificial restraints on the ability of human beings to flourish. Inequality is often gerrymandered. We create rules to artificially benefit ourselves or whatever group we belong to. Say, for example, the example of apartheid in South Africa in the bad old days. The rules were made up in order to keep white people at the top and everybody else in various gradations of color closer to the bottom. There was a gerrymandering that took place to ensure inequality. Now, we had an objection to that because it artificially stepped on the faces of people who wanted to flourish as human beings but were prevented from doing so by a system that was out to deliberately thwart them. So that's why we, would, we were opposed to the apartheid regime, or I assume most of us were. <clears throat> or those of us who were opposed to it. I'll put it that way. So the idea wasn't so much to oppose apartheid in the name of equality as an end in itself. The point was to, to oppose inequality as an end in itself. It seemed that the entire purpose of the South African regime in the bad old days was to promote inequality. That was ultimately the, what motivated the entire structure of the South African government. Everything it did was aimed at this, at maintaining inequality. And that created a sort of perversion of human society that we know as apartheid. Now... Let's say that we have abolished this system that deliberately promotes human inequality. <clears throat> Should we now deliberately um, construct a civilization on the basis of deliberate equality as an end in itself? I would argue that that's equally inhuman. If you've ever read Ayn Rand and the most you know, the almost unbelievably simplistic, even crazy parodies of, I guess, what we would call the leveling instinct, um, where you she does create these societies where, or illustrate these societies in which equality is somehow, in some dystopian future, enforced as an end in itself. Not as a means to something, not as a means to a better way for human beings to be fully human, but as just an end in itself. Equality is 
what we want, no matter what we have to do to get it type thing. Now, this is kind of absurd, the way Rand puts it. Um, but, you know, reductio ad absurdum has its uses, right? Um, is equality an end in itself? No, I don't think so either. The end in itself is for people to be more fully themselves. <clears throat> equality is a means to doing this. It's not an end in itself. Because leveling can take many forms. Leveling can simply be restraining anyone who's trying to improve their own position. In whatever way you want to say improve, it doesn't have to be materially or politically or anything. Just somebody who wants to make their life better. Uh, if we want equality of outcome in, say, in terms of human happiness, well, okay, if um, making some people miserable to make them equal in terms of their experience of life to you know, other people who are miserable, you drag everyone down to the lowest common denominator. We don't really want that, do we? <laughs> um, well, I assume that we don't. Uh, again, if, if equality is an end in itself, then things like, um, say, the the gap between the number of maimed veterans who are male versus female, we can say, okay, the overwhelming majority of maimed war veterans are males. So we have a disparity here. So what we need to do, if we're really following this crazy idea of leveling to its conclusion, is either to reduce the number of male, male maimed male veterans as a proportion of the total number of maimed veterans, ergo, raising the number of female maimed veterans, or dead veterans, I suppose, disabled, um, is a possible way of rectifying the balance. So a drive for equality as an end in itself can lead to a general increase in the number of disabled, maimed, or otherwise damaged veterans, right? That's when equality is an end in itself. But try questioning equality and watch what happens. Uh, you need a lot of courage to do this, and you need a lot of, I would say, determination, uh, perseverance, because <clears throat> people use the same sorts of arguments, again, against equality, in the apartheid era, or in the segregation era, or if you want to go back to the Nazi era. Um, they would say that human beings aren't equal, and we need to enforce this because that's the natural order of things. No. <laughs> uh, any more than we have to enforce the natural equality of people. Um, both of them can end up in nightmare scenarios, right? Um, there was something of that in what the the Khmer Rouge did in the 1970s in Democratic Kampuchea, right? They just slaughtered everybody who was considered to be privileged. Uh, again, leveling. You're not really improving anyone's life. You're just destroying the inequalities in life. So everybody is now in a state of abject terror and misery, but we've got equality at least. Um, again, that's reductio ad absurdum. But we have to ask ourselves, I think, every step of the way, whenever we're attempting anything in terms of social engineering or whatever, social policy, which is kind of a euphemism for social engineering, what is it that we want? Do we want equality as an end in itself? Or do we want, as the alt-right seem to promote, inequality as an end in itself? I would say neither. That would be the healthy way of looking at it. We don't want inequality, but we're also not trying to look for equality. How do you do that? Well, who said perfecting human society is going to be easy? 